Now, would you allow your children to do whatever they like? Mum B Marshall says that a technique called yes parenting, where you avoid saying no to your children, has enabled her to raise her two boys to be more confident and independent. I'm going to be talking to B in just a moment, but first, we found out is uh, setting your children boundaries important? I think that children thrive on structure and boundaries and, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be too tight, but just so they know where they are and they feel secure. Well, they need to learn. They need to learn. I mean, he learns. I mean, he's two and a half. If I say no, then he don't do it. Set boundaries, but let them have flexibility. You know, he's got to have flexibility to learn what's right and wrong in the first place. Every child does need a bit of discipline, otherwise they'll walk all over you. I was brought up with a little bit of discipline, not too strict, but um, with a bit of boundaries, I think that's actually quite important. So I think children need to have boundaries. I don't think discipline's in any way negative. I think it's quite a positive thing, and I think it's something that children respect. OK, I'm joined by Mum of Two, B Marshall, and GP, and also Mum of Two, Dr Ellie Cannon. Thank you both for coming in. Was this something that you did from the day that they were born, that you thought to yourself, oh, they can just do whatever they want? Um, no, not at all. I mean, I did, I did things like I fed on demand and stuff like that. But, um, no, I was very much a super nanny advocate for the first kind of two and a half to three years of my eldest son's life. And then I had a really significant week where three different things happened and it caused me to kind of just do a 180 on my thinking around parenting. And that was when the shift started. So do you, do you actually just allow them to do whatever they want? No. <laughs> okay. what, what, I, what I do is I seek to say yes as much as possible. Right. So I seek to say yes to who they are as individuals, to their passions, to their interests, to how they want to direct their time and their energy. Right. Um, but I really pursue like my parenting in the same way that I do my friendships, my career, on a, a set of principles. So oh. um, honesty, trust, respect, consideration. So I really approach my parenting from that angle. Do you think kids are ready for all that? They're only kids. Yeah, only they are only kids. I think what I've... I think I've made mistakes at times, you know, but I've adjusted and adapted like we all do all the time in life. Sure. So um, I think now I'm very much at a place where I really understand my, each of my individual children's specific needs, my needs. And so we work together to, right. to try and meet those needs so, together. Um, they're not the kind of children then that you would maybe see in a supermarket just going, you know, doing whatever they want, running around daft without you saying no to them. They can do you know, um, you would discipline them then. I mean, no, no, it's a genuine question because the thing yeah, is, sure. you, by not saying no to your children, when they go to school, what mm -hmm. happens to them? Because the, the teacher's yeah. not going to put up with that. The teacher's not going to allow them sure. to express themselves because, sure. the, you know, they would disrupt the class. Um, I ch my, my response to the supermarket thing, because my younger son is, is a naturally more wild child, mm -hmm. um, my choice with that is I will choose to go to the supermarket on my own without them, rather than putting myself in a situation with them where I'm having to kind of constantly right. talk to them. If we are in a supermarket together, um, I have no problem saying to them, guys, we're in a supermarket, people are shopping, we need to be considerate of their needs. And do they and listen to you? Yeah, for the most part. They They're do. not perfect, no children are perfect. No. But yes, for the most part, we, I think we have a very good... Um, way of engaging with each other and in terms of school they've only been at school for a year because we used to home educate um, but they've got on really well they've slotted in they're very social mm. they both regularly get head teachers awards for their um, commitment so they behave friendship. in school they behave so it's not yeah. like they're badly behaved no i mean because you know reading about um the the style of parenting they were saying that you allow them ice cream for breakfast yeah. they're allowed to draw on walls yeah. they can swear you know that's yeah. not that's not going to work in school no, the, interestingly, with the drawing on the walls, they've never once drawn on anybody else's walls. So they know not um, to. They yeah, know but not to it's that. not from any kind of like, oh, guys, this is fine here, but you mustn't do this elsewhere. I, I haven't really come at it with any kind of set rules or anything, but we spend a lot of time um, engaged in discussion, talking. We travelled America together on a nine-week road trip and we stayed in strangers' homes through couch surfing. And we talked a lot about being considerate of other people's spaces, of right. other people's needs. So... Um, so I, I do just choose to say yes to them as much as possible. OK. Ellie, what do you think? Well, it's funny for me because, I mean, I've, I've just brought out a baby book which is all about no rules for new mothers. Right. But I do find myself very much disagreeing with B because we live in a society where we're all constrained by rules. So my daughter will say to me, why do I have to do my homework? Why do you have to go to work today, mummy? And that's the society we're bringing them up in. As you asked about, we have schools, you know, it's OK if, maybe it's OK if they swear in your house, but they wouldn't be allowed to swear at school. 
school and I wonder if it's a little bit unfair to be so laissez-faire with your children and then put them into our normal constrained society. Mm. Yeah, how would they actually deal with that, I guess? We asked you, should you always say yes to your child? Um, and not surprisingly, uh, the poll results was 2% <laughs> said, yeah, you can do that. And 98% said, absolutely not at all. Now, clearly, it, it, it obviously works for you. I mean, you've got a certain sort of lifestyle and it works for you. Um, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But... It's that way of exactly what Ellie's saying. Once they're out into the real world, you know, mm. are they actually going to behave themselves? I think that's part of it. It's part of the lifestyle. I mean, for example, in my house, I have to get to clinic for nine o'clock. So if it's a day when my kids, you know, aren't going to be listening to sort of, you know, no, or we've got to do this, or we've got to do that, no, our time. life is going to fall apart. Yeah. My experience is the opposite. My we, from day one, have always been in the real world, especially when we home educated. We were in the real world far more than we are now because we were out and about all day, every day. Um, on the days when I have to be somewhere, because I run my own business, I'm very clear with the boys. I say, guys, this is what we need to do, and right. we're going to leave at this time. And, and they do? They do that? Yeah. I mean, like all kids, you know, they'll get distracted and they'll do this, and then it's like, you know, have you got your socks on yet, kind of thing. But, um, we, you know, we still have those things. Um, and I, I just, we just kind of flow together. I, I don't know how to describe it, but then we just kind of flow together. Mm. So I'm quite clear about what I need to meet my needs and what mm. I've got in place. And they'll be clear with me about what they need and what they want to do. And we'll, I'll try to make it possible to meet all of those things as best that I can. OK, it's fascinating. Thank you both very much indeed. Um, 